All right, welcome everybody. This is uh, this is Dr. Eric Jorgensen, also known as Dr. Gar Gar Darth Grader, if I could actually say my name, here with the uh, Google Educator Group South Florida, GEG South Florida, uh, continuing our wellness week here. And let me now uh, pass it on to Danielle to introduce herself. Ooh, me. Hi guys, Danielle Clark, uh, Verdi K8. Thank you for being here with us. Four days in a row of wellness. If you made it four days in a row, give yourself a little pat on the back. That is awesome. We are so proud of you. And I'm going to hand it over and then I'll be back to introduce our special guest tonight. So take it away, Robin. Hey everybody, Robin Larrabee. I am a high school teacher down here in Palm Beach County, Florida. I teach at Park Vista High School. Uh, leader, founder of GEG South Florida, enjoying our wellness week. It's a nice, ah, before our school year hits with a bang, which actually might be slightly interrupted by hurricane, but you know, we'll have to wait and see that one. Um, <clears throat> yes, Eric's saying, she don't say, she. okay, so I didn't say that. Anyway, let's hand it off to Stephanie. Hey everybody, I'm Stephanie Hung. I'm the share captain for GEG South Florida. Happy that you guys are here and so grateful for this week because it was very much needed. And now I'm gonna hand it over to Jody. Hey guys, Jody Wolfthal. I am GEG South Florida's Empower Captain. I'm also Forest Hill, one of Forest Hills biology teachers. I'm so excited for you guys to join us tonight for Thoughtful Thursday. If you've been tuning in all week, we've had so many amazing presenters for our week of wellness and we just have so much good stuff to share with you. I'm so excited for Lisa. Danielle, can you please introduce Lisa for us? Yes. So for those of you um, that know me, you know how important this person is to me. She started as a coworker, turned into one of my absolute best friends, and then she married my brother, so we really can't get much closer. Um, but we do have Lisa Poe on tonight with Adventures in Anxiety. So just to preface a little bit of what Lisa does, um, Lisa has been struggling with her own anxiety and different um, issues for an incredible amount of time. And a lot of that was done when she was a younger teenager. She was in school. She was getting, going through all of these things. And when I became an educator, this was something that we talked about a lot because a lot of kids struggle with it. So Lisa has truly just paved a pathway for people to break the stigma, specifically on social media, making it okay to talk about these things opening up that dialogue. So outside of being one of my favorite humans on the planet, she's a true activist and she is just an absolutely empathetic and incredible person. So I'm so excited to have you here tonight. My lead, my Lisa Poe, Adventures in Anxiety, please tell us about yourself and thank you for being here. Well, that was a wonderful intro. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you guys for having me. I'm so excited. I am going to preface this and let you guys know that my dogs are playing in the background. So if you hear any barks, I apologize in advance. But <laughs> I am originally from South Florida and I grew up, I've had anxiety and panic disorder probably my whole life, but it really got bad when I was an undergrad at the University of Florida. So around 18, 19 years old, it really kicked in. I would say high school was pretty rough too. So I've spent the better part of the last 10 years or so really honing in on what can help me overcome anxiety. And in the last couple of years, I've launched this platform Adventures in Anxiety, where I share all the knowledge I've learned in hopes that it can help someone else. And if it doesn't help someone else, at least it can inspire someone else to tell their story because truly telling my story set me free. So, I mean, that's, that's going to be a big theme in this discussion today and this workshop today is that expressing myself, telling my story, set me free from feeling so held back by anxiety and panic. And I'm hoping you guys can take some of that with you as well. So, yeah, so we are like really excited because as educators, we hear it a lot and it's becoming more and more, um, not to use a trend in a negative way, but it is becoming something that younger and younger kids are struggling with. And for us, I think that it's great because it is becoming more normalized and students are able to express themselves. And we can then, as educators, work with them on different strategies and really just differentiation in general on their social skills 
and different tools that we can provide to kind of help counteract that, especially when it comes to times when they're studying or when they're overwhelmed, um, they have a lot of work or they're involved in multiple extracurriculars, if they've got family stuff going on. I mean, you know. So talk to me a little bit about how normalizing anxiety and triggers and panic disorder has helped you find more resources. So you mentioned, you know, kids and students specifically, and I think someone actually said to me recently, well, anxiety is just trendy. And I'm like, it's, that's not, that's not a great thing. You know, I mean, that means it's more common now. So one thing that I would say about normalizing this conversation is just educating people, to be honest, because I think, especially when I was younger, I didn't know what was going on in my head. I didn't know that I, when I was freaking out over my Cal test and like not breathing, that that was a panic attack coming on. I had no idea. And my parents for sure never told me that's what was happening. So normalizing this topic, it's really that education piece, right? It's like, oh, this is happening to me and it happens to other people as well. That in itself is going to make even someone who's young connect with that message. So, you know, I think just the fact that there's myself, but so many people out there now talking about it and making it more normal in society is, is a huge step in the right direction, specifically for the generation below us, mm -hmm. right? So, so one of those tools, and you've tried to get me more involved in this, and I'm excited to try tonight. And we have a ton of people in the chat saying hello and recognizing you. And so we're really excited for that. So let's talk journaling. I know that there are still a teachers that are just going to like love this, but my inner doodle self is what is just so excited to just kind of process via journaling. So talk to me about it. So journaling is a huge part of this, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit after we go through a journal exercise even more, but journaling is a form of, of expression, and in my mind, expression is therapeutic. It's like therapy, right? So it's a huge part of my toolkit, writing in general. Obviously, I have a blog, um, and journaling has been become part of it. It could be stream of consciousness, gratitude list, what have you. But I would love to take everyone through a quick journaling exercise today to kind of give you one that's really helped me. And hopefully you guys can use this in the future. So if y'all are ready, Danielle, if you've got your journal. I got it. I got it. <laughs> also, getting a really cute journal you, getting a really cute journal you, you like helps. I'm just saying. Yeah. So let's start out. This is not necessarily going to be super simple. This is going to be something where I'm going to ask you guys to look inward and really try to find some nagging negative thoughts that are always in your head. So let's start. So what I'd like you guys to do is write down three nagging thoughts or negative beliefs about yourself or about what's your situation right now. Write those down. I'm going to give you some examples. And then after that, we're going to work together to find the positive or the truth to those beliefs that you tell yourself. So I'm going to give you some examples. Feel free to use these examples as yours. Um, I think some of you may resonate with the, with this. So for example, I'm scared of the unknown. Like I'm so scared of the unknown. I mean, there's a pandemic right now. What's going on with school, virtual school, kids, parents working from home, you know, now there's a hurricane coming, I guess, you know, I'm, I'm scared of the unknown. And this, this, this is scary. Like that's a nagging thought for me. So and, that, that's and, one that I wrote down. Do you have a preferred yeah. journal? I mean, I know you can journal on anything, scraps of paper. I mean, they're harder to keep collected, but is there a preferred journal that, that you like or things like that? So I actually have like a little Amazon storefront on my website that I have okay. some of my like literally three or four of my favorite journals. There's the five minute journal, which is phenomenal. It's literally five minutes a day. It's pretty much a gratitude journal, but it really, really challenges you. And then I honestly love just like stream of consciousness writing and a blank journal. So those are probably my top two. But if you do go to my site um, and you'll see a little spot for like the Amazon store, there's a couple more in there that are really, really good self starters for people who are, are learning how to journal. Awesome. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, 
I'm going to give one more example so you guys can kind of get some thought starters here. My, I have this fear that my anxiety and my panic disorder put me in danger. So I have anxiety sometimes when I'm driving. I'm not sure if anyone can relate. So if I'm having anxiety when I'm driving, I feel like I'm not safe, right? So that is kind of in the back of my mind a lot of the time. Um, I, I lied. I'm going to give one more just because I asked you guys for three. And maybe you guys can relate. And I really think children and students can relate to this, especially I feel like middle school. I don't know why. I just think back to middle school and this is what I feel. Middle school is hard. It's hard. So my one of the biggest ones is people will judge me or think less of me if I make a mistake. So I'm a perfectionist. I'm type A. I'm a worry wart, anxious, what I, all the things. Enneagram three, you know, just you throw them at me. That describes me. So I don't ever want to make a mistake because, and if I really dig deep and say, why was I such a perfectionist? Why did I always want to be the best at everything I could be? And literally physically scared of making a mistake is because I thought people would judge me or people would think less of me or I wouldn't be good enough in that situation. And I think children can, students, I mean, I would say high school is probably the height of this feeling. And even I'm 29. So even as an adult in the workplace, it comes up. Yeah, that was so, the first thing I wrote is I'm afraid to fail. Like at this like age where you're supposed to, and we talked about this a little bit last night um, with our wellness consultant, Sarah Green, of when you're juggling it all, when do you find time to just like put something down and not feel bad about it? And that's such a hard thing. I mean, we're, this is a voluntary group. We all hang out with each other. And sometimes I feel like we talk to each other more than I, you know, I speak with my family. And so when you're a part of something, you almost get so immersive. And I see that with kids where, you know, they have to be so immersive with their school. They have to be so immersive with their clubs. They have to be so immersive with their studies. They have to be immersive with any recreational stuff. And I wonder if a lot of that comes from self-inflicted fear. So that's, that's something really cool that you just pointed out that I, it just like, it all made sense. It's like, wait, if I make a mistake, like, or if I turn red because my anxiety is bad, like that person's going to judge me. And then that's really why I'm panicking. Right. So I'm going to play off that Danielle and say, I want you guys to look for the truth and these feelings. So for example, I'm, I'm afraid of failure. I can't make mistakes. The truth behind that, like the universal truth behind that, not like I'm telling you this is the truth. I mean, this is the truth is that mistakes are what make you human. And we all make mistakes, right? So the truth is I am human. Danielle, you are human. Students, if, if you're a parent, if you have kids, like remind them that that is literally what makes us human. Mm -hmm. And if we just remind ourselves in the moment, it's not going to happen overnight. But if we recognize these things, you know, like I said, you dug deep and you're like, oh, I was, I was scared of failing or like, I didn't want to let anyone down. Well, that's, that's part of life. And you are human as are every single person in your life. There's no superhuman around you, right? We are all human. And I think that's something I actually write down a lot in my journal. Like I am human. I can make mistakes. So like, I think that's one that a lot of us can really relate to. So another one that we talked about a little bit, I talked about is, is that my anxiety and panic disorder put me in danger, right? Or maybe people are feeling that this pandemic or in this situation that we're in and this life we're living puts us in danger and we feel scared or we feel like something's going to happen to us. But in this moment right now, the truth is like, Danielle, you at home, you know, everyone else here, whoever's here, like in your space, Jody, you are safe right now. Like, you are safe. I am safe. I'm in a safe space. I am talking to my sister-in-law, one of my best friends. And when I'm journaling, I'm usually in a safe space. Yeah. So that's just the universal truth. So it's really, you know, I want you guys to recognize these nagging thoughts that maybe you have more often than you have positive thoughts, and that's okay. But I want you to challenge yourself to combat that with truth. And it's going to be hard with some of them. I don't know if you have another one, Danielle, you want to share, but I'm happy to give another example. 
Yeah. So I wrote that I'm afraid that my anxiety is going to cause me to miss important things. Right. So, but the fact, so the truth is here that you're self-aware of that. Yeah. And I want to talk about that a little bit with journaling too, because when you talk about journaling, right, you're like, oh, you want me to just write my thoughts down? Like, no, but it's the challenge. So for me to say that, I'm like, dang, like that's, that's heavy because I'm, I'm still a relatively new mom and I am about to be a very important part of hundred children's lives in a space where, like you said, we have to tell ourselves we're safe. And then we might have to go back to brick and mortar where that may not be something that we truly feel, but we're still going to have to go do that and then come home and do it for our families. And so I'm afraid that that also transpires into being anxious about something to all people like it, this, this is just unraveling and it's just because I wrote down one thought exactly and we could come up with a ton of truths right like we could work on this for a long time but, but one of them is that you're self-aware of that and actually it probably makes you very prepared for things and I'm not going to sit here and be cliche and be like all anxiety and uh, depression is great and there's a positive to it all because sometimes it just sucks right but when you challenge yourself to see the real truth, it kind of brings you that peace of mind. And looks like Jody might want to share. So, go Jody! Oh my gosh, that was too funny. <laughs> when you said, "Does anybody want to share?" I was like, "I do." <laughs> I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, and you know what's crazy is that you say so many things, and I, and I work so hard every day on like the meditating, the journaling, making sure that like you've got your mindset right, reading the right books. I saw, I did open up your Amazon shop and, and I was looking at some of the books that you had there. And I was like, wow, I have some of these books. And I know that it's work every day, but, and even though I don't like fall into these, like I still know that they're in the back of my mind. Like I don't let them rule my life, but there's still real fears like that I'll never find the true love that I'm looking for or that, I won't be able to support myself on my own because I have moved out and then I had things happen like we all do. And now I'm back in my parents' house and I'm 30 years old. And I know the people's thoughts. Like I know what people think when they hear that. And you like, especially my students, cause my students were like, wow, 30, I better have kids and I better be married. And it's like, okay guys, like it's just a number. Like don't rush into something just because you, you have this mindset of I have a path and it has a time and there's a clock and and I've like done a lot of work of like trying to get past that also. And then the biggest one that I think is the fear of that I'm not worthy of the success that I see. And I think that's a common one. I, I want to jump back to the first one that you were talking about, about maybe not finding that love in your life or living with your parents or whatever the, whatever the case may be there is the universal truth that you can t you can remind yourself or write down when you're feeling like this this is temporary yes yeah. that's just the truth i i you know i'm not and that sometimes you're like yeah but i have been waiting forever and that is there's so much truth to that too but this is temporary and that's what you you know these are the reminders that you have to tell yourself to get through these times where maybe you are really down or really sad or maybe going through an anxious or, or a bout of depression, but you know, this is temporary. And I think for a lot of us right now with this pandemic, we have to remind ourselves with that. It feels like it's never going to end and it feels like it's only getting worse. And it feels like the world is ending some days, but if we come back, like I said, and we find the, the universal truth is that this is temporary. It's like maybe that maybe there are more truths you can dig up, Jody, and I think there are. But that is something that like to start you off, right? Yeah. So, Thank what was you. the second one again? Because I had another um, that I won't be able to support myself. That you won't be able to, so, or you don't deserve the success. Oh, that was it? the last one. That I'm not worthy of the success that I seek. Let me just tell you, I think a lot of people feel that way. I think it's how society has 
raised us almost, but the truth is that you are enough. And um, I think that goes for everyone here. You are enough exactly where you are in life and you're making it. Look at you, you're putting on this amazing live thing. Like again, you're at your parents' house, who cares? That's temporary, right? Like you are enough. And I don't wanna ever seem like a cliche or that anxiety is gonna go away like that, but there are tools um, to use. And this is one of those exercises that I come back to. And I think of a ton of stuff. I mean, I have a lot of negative thoughts back there. I have a lot of things that hold me back. And if you get them out on paper, get that expression out, right? And then search for the truth. You know, it's, it is, it is, it is healing, truly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. I felt this. <laughs> I'm glad. And I don't want to take too long on this. This is something that you can take five minutes to do. You can get a journal off Amazon for $8. And I personally love certain kind of pens, but you know, that's just me type a, um, but journaling is one tool and the anxiety toolkit that I, I'm, I'm a big believer in. And this is a practice that has really shown me the other side of a lot of these fears. And I think something that Danielle and Jody for sharing specifically, I, I think that's just a reminder that none of us are alone in a lot of these thoughts. So with journaling too, like it doesn't have to be a meditative state. You sit down with your pretty journal. Like sometimes I find myself just like writing like little post it. And like okay, I, I literally like I want to show you like what what is Yes, please show what, us. I love what this. is that? Like, I love it. Oh wait, it says that's all for today. Heart. Like, look at it. Like, it, it doesn't have to be any like just blurbs. I think it's super cute. <laughs> it makes Thanks. Sense. Um, but again, you can you can write down song lyrics. I don't getting out of your mind and onto the paper, whatever the hell that looks like. Right. <laughs> I saw a question pop up. I'm not 100% sure who it came from, but it was, uh, how do you deal with when your kids have anxiety or anxiety? With your ch how do you deal with anxiety for your children? First of all, I'm not an expert or a therapist, I promise. There you go. Um, and I don't want anyone to, uh, I want everyone to know that I'm, I'm not a therapist by any means, but I will say something from my experience growing up with anxiety and panic disorder. It's very crippling at times. Um, one thing that I wish my parents did, like I want to be the parent that does this, is recognize these symptoms and educate me about them. Because my mom knew I was having a panic attack in preschool when I said my stomach hurt and I, you know, I didn't want to go on the bus and I was like scared of everything and hiding in my room. I asked her to this day, mom, why? You knew I was literally panicking and like crumbling. Why didn't you talk to me about it? And she's like, oh, I thought you would just get through it. And that's not her fault at all because she truly thought I would just get over it. She's like, I didn't want to scare you. I wish she would have just told me what that was because the unknown for so many years from the age of like six years old when that started until I figured out what this was when I was 19. I mean, I just wish the education piece was there. And if you have the means to do that, if you have background knowledge, if you have access to therapy, that is one thing that I would highly recommend for that. Well, it wasn't so much, the question wasn't geared, you know, towards my children having anxiety. It's me having anxiety about them because they're growing up. That would be my dog, sorry. Um, you know, my, my daughter is about to embark on law school. My son's about to graduate from high school. And, you know, I kind of get caught up in, in the what ifs. You know, well, what if this doesn't happen? And what if that doesn't happen? So that's that's kind of what I was talking about with the anxiety for my children. Okay, sorry. I didn't mean to. I'm, clearly I'm sure my dog was distracting <laughs> enough. Um, I will say that you're just going to have to. I recommend that you let go of control a little bit of those things because your kids, I think you're going to law school, they're in college, right? they're already so successful and you've brought them up to be a certain way and think back to what you instilled in them and where they are today and realize like, they're going to be okay. Maybe just try to, I, I say this, I am not a parent and I'm sure this is nearly impossible to let go of control of that. 
but reminding yourself that like they've got it. And I think you said your daughter is at the University of Florida. She definitely got it. <laughs> but yeah. no, I'm a theater. <laughs> but, I feel like Florida's like somebody is. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think it's just you already believe in them. You're already proud of them. Like, yeah. look at what they're doing. Believe yeah. it. Yeah. Try to just let that. Oh, look at all of us. Tight bay. They're like hanging out together. Well, and, and and if I can jump in, there was <clears throat> I like listening to podcasts, and there was a great uh, podcast recently that had I was just looking it up. Uh, Michelle Norris on it. It was actually the Michelle Obama podcast, and Michelle Norris was talking about her grown children um, being home because of the pandemic. Pandemic, but her needing to learn to let go that they are actually you know, legally adults, and some of them are older than legal adults. Um, and just, you know, it, it, my wife is going through the same thing. It, it definitely is, I think, a, a mom type thing to want to, you know, you, it, it, it's called, Dave Ramsey calls it the, the butt wiping syndrome. That, you know, you, you've been taking care of them since they were so little and taking care of their every need and needing to learn to, to let go of that. Exactly. I think the butt wiping syndrome, that's hilarious. Um, but yeah, and I, it's easier said than done. Listen, again, these things are just going to take some inner reflection, right? And uh, some practice for sure, as do all these things. So yeah, that was a great question. So we're going to do a lot of Q&A like at the end because clearly people are vibing with you and this is awesome. This is exactly what we wanted. Um, Jeff brought up a really great question, and I think a lot of us, especially with education kind of getting back in the swing of things, and a lot of us not really feeling supported is asking, like, what is the truth behind that fear of constantly letting others down? Like, have you read about that? How do you, what have you seen? What can you offer for us with that? You mean like that fear of almost making a mistake or not, or not fulfilling something for someone else. Mm -hmm. I don't, I mean, I don't think there's necessarily like a one size fits all answer there. I do think that um, the people you surround yourself in your support system, they, they all, you, you need to know that they all love you for as you are. And I think that we tend to forget that when we're trying to perform or when you're in the class and you want to have a great day or whatever the case may be, or even holidays with your family. Don't even get me started on the holidays, but you know, the holidays with your family, things like that. Oh, boundaries. We're, we're pushing that. That's later. <laughs> yeah. We won't talk about boundaries yet, but <laughs> I just think knowing that you are enough and knowing that the people around you also believe that you are your own worst critic. And I, I, I think we just need to open our eyes to the other side sometimes, right? We get so caught up in our head and we're like, picking and prodding at every little thing physically and mentally and whatever it's like you're enough like all all y'all right now and i know that seems really simple but it's just kind of a mindset shift and you're gonna have to work on it i mean this is something i work on every day so i don't know if i have an exact answer to that but i do think that believing that your support system and everyone around you and the kids in your classroom look up to you and see the best in you when you're looking at the other half, you know, uh, it's just an eye opener. So I don't think it's a whole half. I'm just going to say <laughs> I think oh. it's like the 10% that we just critique so hard, oh my even gosh. though like 90% of you is worthy and enough and perfect exactly how it is but we find every little bit to critique on and it really is such a small piece of who we are and people forget that because you're right you know you we're all like, that one time in her classroom when she stuttered up there because she didn't know what two plus two was I mean, do you remember that she sucked <laughs> you know, no, it, that's not what they're going to remember they're going to remember that you brought they're gonna remember what they learned from you. They're gonna remember how you made them feel, right? So we like hyper focus on these, these insecurities that we have and these imperfections when in reality, we're all imperfect. Mm -hmm. And it really is what bonds us together. Like this is how we connect. Yeah. These insecurities and these conversations is how we connect. 
Yeah. That's how we make friends. That's how we find our support system. That's how we relate to people in our family. That's how you relate to your ki the kids in the classroom when you're there for them or when they don't understand something and you're helping them. Right. I mean, I'm not a teacher, but I mean, yeah. I know when I was a student. That's how it was. Yeah. So I know we have, that was just the beginning. I, I feel like we've like already started our podcast. Like we're <laughs> so, podcast. No, I don't have a podcast. Um, so but, what do you have next for us? Because I know we want to talk about um, movement. You're huge into fitness. Um, Lisa also makes like the most bomb smoothies I've ever seen. So we cannot let you her without some smoothie talk. And <laughs> what else? Keep going. What do you got? So I'm just going to go over like the four pillars of a toolkit to help with anxiety or anxiety disorders, which um, those can be depression, they can be phobias, they can be agoraphobia, anxiety, all the things, social anxiety, they all kind of fall into this anxiety disorder place. So I've kind of created this toolkit that I really try to stick by in order to get through my day to day life. So anxiety doesn't control me. So the first one was what I call therapy, but I'm going to say expression, journaling. You don't necessarily have to go to talk therapy if you don't want to, or you can't, you know, if you don't have the resources to do so, it's totally understandable. But expression is number one. We kind of just dug into that really great, right? Letting it out, getting it off our chest, writing things out, expression. This could be art for you, music. This could be FaceTiming your best friend every Friday at five o'clock. And I said this at the beginning, telling my story set me free, expression set me free. And I, I really find that to be true for a lot of people. So that's number one, whatever therapy is for you, whatever that feeling or expression of letting go, like that's the number one tool in my toolkit. I love talk therapy too. My therapist is the bomb. So you got one of those, they're pretty great too. But I'm gonna talk about the smoothies right now. So really quick, food is part of my toolkit. I'm going to say this, I do not diet. Ask Danielle. I used to, and it was horrible. Um, I do not diet. I don't follow any challenge plans uh, or like a whole 30. If you do, like more power to you. But for me, it was just setting myself up to fail. And it was mm. such a bad battle for me. So what I found is um, something called the Fab Four, which I'm going to show you a book really quick so you guys know what I'm referring to. But... Um, it's called Body Love by Kelly Levesque, and this is also on my website on my Amazon page. If you guys need to know exactly where to get it, you can clearly see I took a lot of notes. Um, this book is all about learning how food can balance your blood sugar, and I'm not I'm not a nutritionist. I'm just going to tell you some some notes from the book. Basically, eating to balance your blood sugar is eating balanced meals. So having fiber in every meal, having healthy fats in every meal, making sure you're getting your protein making sure you're eating your greens, make sure you're hydrating. And all this, all this starts is anxiety disorders are linked to inflammation in the body and balancing that blood sugar can help reduce inflammation. So to get that kind of sciencey thing behind it, you want to balance that blood sugar out to reduce the inflammation in your body and in turn help to reduce those feelings of anxiety, right? Have you ever heard of a sugar high for a kid when they eat a pixie stick? Are those still a thing? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I was all the, well, I had a pixie stick and I was running around with <laughs> my blood sugar went whoop. And then about 20 minutes later, I like, you know, I crashed and burned, right? That still happens to adults. Like mm -hmm. we eat all sugar or whatever that is, which I love sugar. You know, we go like this and then we drop. But people with anxiety, when you're dropping, it affects your anxiety, it affects your cortisol, your stress levels. <laughs> Yeah, like when you're falling off something, I mean, mm -hmm. that's a big piece. So big into smoothies. Um, I just came up with this recipe. I call it the cashew cookie smoothie. It's so good. Mm -hmm. And it is, and I, it's on my Instagram. So if you guys want like exact measurements, you can go grab it. Um, but it is almond milk, spinach. You can't taste it, I promise. <laughs> Cashew butter, I'm a big cashew butter fan, probably eat too much of it, but whatever. Um, a little bit of like oats. So if you have like quick oats or rolled oats or whatever you got, like I think it's like a quarter of a cup. Um, sea salt, that sounds weird, but it enhances the flavor. I don't know if you ever had like a, a chocolate chip cookie with sea salt and it just tastes mm -hmm. a little bit better, think of it like that. Okay. 
so much better. I use a vanilla protein powder. Um, again, if you want to go on my Instagram or whatever, you can see exactly what that is. And then some some sort of fiber, right? I was telling you, you want to balance that blood sugar. You want to like reduce inflammation. So I use flax meal. You can use chia seeds. You can use acacia fiber. You can use more spinach. Um, you know, whatever the case may be. But that's your balance smoothie, right? You got your protein with the protein powder. You got your fats, cashew butter. You've got your greens with the spinach. You've got fiber, which is in the greens and in the flax, and it keeps you full for a long time and it balances you out. And I'm like the number one dessert queen. Like, I'm pretty sure I should just change my Instagram bio to like cookie enthusiast or something. Um, <laughs> Love it. I still eat whatever I want to eat. Like I said, ask Danielle, I'm known around the families for like, if someone wants to like make a new recipe, like I'll try it because I will like be so in heaven with food. <laughs> but keeping this in the back of my mind that like, I can't just have cookies all day because I'm going to be up and down and my anxiety is going to like go out the window and trying to eat balanced meals when I can and having a smoothie every day. I'm a big routine person. I love my smoothies. So, you know, I've got a, a ton of recipes over there. You can check them out on my Instagram, but that's another one. So food is, is food can heal you. I mean, there's also foods that have been clinically shown to help with anxiety and depression. And some of those are avocado and salmon, things that are like, mm. but some of those are also dark chocolate and red wine. So like, let's go, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it's great. And so. That's my kind of health. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. Like we shouldn't show each other. And there's one other thing I, I want to call out that a lot of people may not know that may help people with anxiety and depression is that they call your gut or your stomach, they call it the second brain. Yes. And that's because your gut is directly linked to your brain. So when your gut is inflamed, when your gut is not happy, when your stomach hurts, that's connected to your brain, which mental health, anxiety, depression, things like that. So got to make your gut happy, right? You got to make your stomach happy. And a big part of that is actually taking probiotics. So I work for a brand called Garden of Life. So I obviously take those probiotics because I get them. But any type of probiotic, there's even foods with probiotics, like Greek yogurt has a lot of probiotics, kombucha, if you like it, you, that you're into that kind of thing. Lemon. You know, it adds that good bacteria to your gut and in turn helps your brain, right? So there's a connection there. There is healing in food. And I'm not someone who's ever going to tell you to eat a certain way because I eat whatever, whatever I want. But there are certain pieces of science and nutrition that if you know can truly help feel mentally. Lisa, if I can just say, like, to me, it was very powerful what you said about eating what you want and not restricting, because I know for myself, I go up and down like a yo-yo. Like, my closet ranges from size 6 to size 12, right? And I realize that when I'm trying to force myself to be a certain size, it kind of ruins my self-esteem, right? Like, in my hope, and then then even more crushing, I'm doing it against someone else's parameters. So I look at someone else who's been more consistent possibly, or just has a different body type and they've been successful in their weight loss. And then I feel like really bad because I haven't. So then I kind of derail myself. So I think that letting yourself go and just live in your own moment against your own, um, what makes sense for you is, is really important because I think the weight loss, that whole thing is so hard. And I don't want to like, I have a family member who grew up heavy. And I mean, he got so much ridicule from family members and kids and it can just create such a low self-esteem. So I just think, and I thank you for saying that because a lot of us, that's where a lot of the anxiety comes from is that exterior look and trying to measure up to someone else. Yeah, um, funny you bring that up, Steph. Uh, I actually had a complete meltdown today because I am going on a trip and I was trying for my husband's birthday and I was trying on a jumpsuit and it was tight and I had a full blown panic. This sounds so wow. This sounds so nar narcissistic, but I really did. I, I, I literally lost it. I was like, I, I can't fit to the jumpsuit. I wanted to wear it. I, it fits, but it looked, dis I, uh, I was like, I'm so uncomfortable in my own skin. Like, why, why, you know, quarantine 15, all these stupid conversations. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I'm healthy. So are you. Right. And I was so, I was a shell of myself when I dieted. I spent all day tracking my macros in an app. 
And so they're talking to the people around me. I, I tried spent, to mm -hmm. oh my God, I, my fitness pal, I, I just hate it. Um, I again, feel like I'm different. Different. more anxiety. It's oh my God. Yeah. I, I was so, I, that's the first time I did Whole30. Anyone who does Whole30, bless you, it's very difficult. Um, I did Whole30. Uh, there was this weight loss challenge I was part of like three years ago. And I did Whole30. Um, and I experienced real depression for the first time in my life. That was a bad time. Mm -hmm. It was wow. a very bad time for me because I couldn't enjoy, like I love to bake for people. I like to make big ziti. I like to like go to the coffee shop and get a muffin and like hang out and talk about food. And like, it was a passion that I was like stripping myself of because for what? Mm -hmm. And so you know, I found this this balance. I'm not as small as I used to be. I'm also not as young as I used to be. I'm not as small as I used to be, but like I said, if you just keep these key nutrient facts, like are you getting your protein in? Are you hydrating yourself? Are you taking care of yourself? Are you eating greens and vegetables? Do you have to eat a salad every day? No, but like, are you getting the nutrients you need to survive and function properly? You're, you're good. Like do, you'll, your body will settle into its norm. Like, so Lisa, there's something that I experienced a while ago and I decided to shift my mindset from outputs to um, inputs. So kind of like that thing. So instead of looking at, Ooh, I, I, like this. Pounds, I started looking at, I need to drink more water, right? Which if I let go of the soda and drink more water, that 15 pounds is going to come anyway. But I used to be so fixated on the final exam. I didn't take an opportunity for the journey to happen. Yeah, that's, and you know, I don't, I think it's actually part of the book I recommended, but like, stop saying things you can't eat, like Whole30, you can't even eat beans, like, dude, what is that? Like, beans are great, but like, stop saying what you can't eat, right? and why don't you just add these things to your diet? You don't, if you don't like avocado, try another healthy fat that's good for you. If, if you hate broccoli, like, saute some spinach or throw it in your smoothie, you can't taste it. Like, stop saying I can't have wine, I can't have chips and guac, I can't have this because honestly, that's miserable, A. I mean, if you're like me and you, and you thoroughly enjoy food, but B, like you said, input versus output. Like let's put the good nutrients in our body, right? Let's, let's, let's nourish our body and honor it with these things, with these healthy fats, this fiber, these vegetables, water all day, water, water, water. Let's also like not shame or there's cheap foods like i had my cheat day dude if i hear cheat day one more like no you're not cheating. who are you cheating on who are you cheating on the smoothie are you, are you cheating on the smoothie? i'm sorry no diet culture though yeah. and that's, but that was a thing part of my panic attacks yeah my weight don't own a scale anymore my weight what size i wore and and what i and if I was following a diet or whatever the hell, you know, sorry. Um, but you know, I think that's a trigger for so many people and it is because of society we live in. It's right. social media. Dude, so, clean up your feet, man. Like people who are like, there's just the general knowledge behind anxiety and phobias and triggers and panic disorders, you know, we want to talk about boundaries and we want to talk about triggers and we're all going to have a lot of these in the next few weeks. And so mm -hmm. like having the knowledge behind that, reading these books, knowing these resources, um, powering through grocery lists and meal prepping and all these other things that we know are healthy for us. Do you think that by empowering yourself to become more knowledgeable about the things that, that trigger you can be like a really good, just first step? Oh, yeah. Um, I'm going to add to my uh, tagline here. That time my story set me free. Knowledge is power, right? I'm dead. Uh, that's not trademarked. Someone must be on that. <laughs> uh, knowledge is power, right? So like I said before, when about I wish my mom told me what anxiety was back in the day. Um, but knowledge is power. And with boundaries, with mental health, with life, yeah, you know, Soak it up. Learn. You know, I've done a lot of research. I've read a lot of books, and that's why I share it because I just want people to know what works for them. What what I'm saying, you might hate the smoothie I told you. You're being like, what is this? Like, 
doesn't work for you. Girl, but, Steph, if you like sweets, go follow her. Sweets girl. <laughs> yeah. All that. But you know, what works for you? And everyone's going to be different, but having that knowledge is the starting point. So it's like knowledge is power here. And I know I, I kind of got into the food thing a little bit and the supplements with probiotics. Um, that's just one piece of the toolkit, but one that once you learn what works for you, is like you don't have to think about it. Like you go and you order a pizza, but you add veggies to the pizza. And then you have a, you know, you you're make sure me you get really hungry, Lisa. <laughs> okay, I'm really my salad. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, this is a game changer. Like, just those tastes. I, I, I mean, having fruitful food, like food that's mm -hmm. good. Yeah, man. I'm not telling you to. You know, eat whatever, eat what you want to eat, but like Stephanie said, input versus output. Like, let's stop calling food bad, I'm calling it a cheat day. And moderation is key, I think, for that type of stuff. You know, like there are things that are healthy, but nothing is healthy if you overindulge. Wine is great when you have a glass; you shouldn't have a whole bottle. Dark chocolate is great when you have small pieces. <laughs> I'm not saying I haven't ever done that. I'm just saying for the health benefits. <laughs> I think moderation. Like avocados are really healthy. If you eat four of them, it's not really healthy anymore. You would like poop yourself. Don't eat. Please don't eat four avocados. I've done that. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking the tough stuff tonight. Yeah, sorry. I get a little passionate about that because uh, I went through a lot of, of up and downs. It hurts when you don't feel like familiar. We wonder that with our students. You know, it's so hard because how many educators are going to view this video? Like, we have hundreds of members, and you could ask any of these educators, how many times have you gotten upset with a student? because they're going to the bathroom too many times. They're leaving your class. It automatically, don't get me wrong, some of them are just, you know, abusing that power. Some of them may really be ill, and it may be something that they haven't shared with anybody. And they're running to the restroom, and they're embarrassed that they have to ask that many times. I mean, it's unfortunate that as educators, we're not therapists, so we can't diagnose anything, but you can always ask. You can ask them, hey, are you okay? Or can I help you with anything? And you never know what they're going to open up and say to you. And so looking into that, um, you also have to be prepared for them to say everything's fine. So let's let's talk boundaries, Lee. Talk to me about it. Let's go. Um, we got about 10 minutes left, just so you know. That's it? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How did that happen? So carved out as the official therapist of GEG South Florida. So I hope you're available every year. I'm not a therapist because that's like I can't say that. But oh, yes, yeah, so um, pseudo therapist. Um, our talking um, coach. Can we call you like our 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 oh, emotional okay. mental health coach? I like that. We can try. <laughs> we can put you through a whole year. Talk to us about certification. It's free. <laughs> Um, I love when she keeps doing the hair flip. Like, okay, okay. But before you do the, the boundaries, because I'm taking notes, you had okay. four pillars, right? Mm -hmm. So you had food and expression. So I don't want to lose anything. Did I miss something? All right, or I'm gonna hit three really fast. It's super okay, okay. Easy. Everyone's gonna know what I'm gonna say, so I'm just gonna say it. Movement, and I call it movement. I don't call it exercise because, um, or you know, I do say workout once in a while, or whatever. But I call it movement because it could be walking, it could be stretching, it could be foam rolling, it could be going to boxing class, my personal favorite. It could be running a marathon if that's your thing, but what works for you? So don't force yourself to go to the gym or go to a cycling class. Like I used to do it all the time. I would like force myself to do cycling. I hated it. Like, I don't mean, know, why did I do that for so many years? I like, I would look at the clock in the class and be like, okay, five more, okay, four more minutes. Like, you know, like life's too short, move how you want to, right? So now I walk, I lift weights and I like to box. Granted the boxing gyms aren't open, but when they are, movement is key and whatever that looks like for you, that's the one that's gonna benefit your body the most. Because if you are struggling to get through an Orange Theory class, that's another one I would stare at the clock. You know, I, I was making myself go to Orange Theory for a year at 5.45 a.m. Why did I Robin. do that? I knew that was going to happen as soon as you 
We're running late tonight. We're just going to warn everybody because we're only on pillar three and we have a lot to keep going with. So. Wait, well, I got this class. We're going. We're good. I wasn't, I wasn't, if you like March theory, that is good for you. You're, you're a bad, you know, boss. <laughs> <laughs> and that is a really hard workout. I would like stare. I'd be like, oh my God, there's 30 minutes. Oh my gosh. CrossFit twice a day. Eric, oof. I, Dude, I love CrossFit. Well, no, I'm not going to get into it. Anyway, so <laughs> do what works for you. Move your body. That's what I'm going to call it. Movement. That is the pillar. If that's walking, if that is walking your dogs, if that's foam rolling when you wake up in the morning, move that body. We all know the benefits of exercise. I don't even have to get into that. But the key here is doing what you actually enjoy and not forcing yourself to do workouts you don't like because that's not going to do any. I mean, maybe you'll sweat and whatnot, but the first two pillars, pillar one, therapy or expression, two, food, so use food to heal you, like I said, balance meals, you know, Stephanie coined it, input versus output, what are we going to add to our diets, let's not talk about what we're going to take away, what are we going to add, what are we, you know, these foods that are really good for us and for our mind, right, movement, do the movements you love, and that's what's going to benefit you the most, if anyone wants to come work out at my garage gym, come at me. I'm in Jupiter. I love lifting weights. I'll do it any day with you. Um, and my last one, and I'm going to uh, generalize this by saying support system. There's a lot of pieces to this. Um, one of them being boundaries, which I think Danielle's asked about three times. So we're definitely going to do it. She's like, I need you to tell me about these boundaries. Right? So, <laughs> I only get like... I don't get VIP treatment. <laughs> so support system. Like how many times are you going to see on my Instagram or me? Like you are not alone. You are not alone. You are not alone in how you're feeling. And I'm going to say it a million times, but it's the truth. You have certain people in your support system that you can lean on for different things. Like my husband's not great when I cry. He literally freezes up and doesn't do anything. Right. So I've got to call Danielle or my best friend, Tara, you know, learning those pieces of your support system and what they can help you with and really leaning on, like allowing yourself to lean on them. When like I'm having anxiety, I text my sister Angela because she's dealt with anxiety her whole life too. And so I'm like, okay, I'm shaking. I can't breathe. Like she knows what to say. She's been there with me. She's, um, she just listens. She'll call me whatever the case may be. She's that pillar of my support system that I can trust and be comfortable leaning on for that. You know, like I said, my husband, not great when I cry, but he is great when I need to like loosen up a little bit. Right. So he'll like be like, all right, let's go do something else. Let's distract you. Let's, let's cook dinner together. Let's watch this stupid show you like. Right. And so he, he was really good at that at being like, let me help you stop dwelling in your mind. And I'm going to, you know, bring you here. So it's like defining that support system and really, leaning in on them and not being afraid to lean in on them. But the big thing with your sports system here is boundaries. The keyword boundaries. So I don't think I ever heard this word. I didn't know it existed until like two years ago. I said yes to everything. I was the overachiever at work who worked till 10 PM. I just did, you know, I didn't have, what is a boundary? I said yes to everyone. I never thought about myself. I was like, how am I going to make that person happy? How am I going to make that person happy? Um, and I'm going to make it really simple. Before we say yes to things, this is like a tactic, or before we, like, we commit to a party or um, an extracurricular activity or whatever the case may be, like pause for a second and ask yourself, do I actually want to do this? Like Lisa, do you want to do this? Like, is this, is this good for you? Like, is there too much on your plate? Like we just need to take a step back and assess if it's the best thing for ourselves in that moment. That sounds so easy, but it is so hard. And also another thing that's very hard when you say no, try not to say sorry after it. Ooh. That is something that is like, I think I do, you know, like she's like, Oh, you want to hang out? I'm like, no, I'm so sorry. Oh my God. You know, I just can't, I, I had this thing and like, um, it's raining and you know, 
And you're like, I don't want to, and that's okay. I say sorry like 45 times a day. Like, I feel like I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. And guys, I do all this do. I'm like throwing my pen. I need to chill. So, <laughs> we're passionate about boundaries. Well, because this is about to be a really big deal. I mean, mm -hmm. working outside of your office hours, being okay to work outside your office hours. When we are, we have to have designated office hours. I mean, you yeah. name it. Whatever hybrid, virtual, or brick and mortar learning looks like for everyone is different. But you still have to like be available, and then you still have to know when you're not. And you're gonna. If you're anything like me in the sense that you are probably a recovering people pleaser, or maybe you still are a full blown people pleaser. Yes. Okay. You're going to have to practice this when in every facet of your life. And it is going to drain you some days to let people down or what you think is letting them down. Right. Or to have to cut work off early because you need mental, like you need a mental break. It's, this is not, I'm saying this so easily, like, oh, ask yourself, is it good for you? Like, just don't go, like, don't say sorry. I'm just saying, no, it's not that easy. It's very hard. And if you're someone who has done it your whole life, I mean, that's even harder. Yeah. So we got to practice these things and be like, tune inward first. Do you want to do this? Is this going to benefit you? There are some things you got to do that you don't want to do. I completely get that. But you know, there's you don't have to say yes to everything. You don't have to um, stay late for work. Like there are boundaries, and if you said to your boss or whatever, you know, some are different. But my boss now, I used to work so late, and he's like, "Lisa, six thirty, that's it." Like, like he set the boundary for me, you know. So there, are, that support system will support those boundaries. And even if they get mad at you for a split second, if you just explain to them and be like, "Listen." I'm really struggling right now, having the energy to even get up and go to my work from home situation for eight hours. Calling you back is the last thing that I have the energy to do. Usually that person in your support system or the person who truly cares about you is going to be like, wow, I didn't realize that. Um, I'm here for you if you need anything. Nine times out of 10, yes, that's how they're going to react. Even though we're so scared, they're going to be mad at us. Yes. <laughs> like, you know, if we, if we just communicate that, it sounds, I'm making it sound easy. It's really not easy. Yeah. Um, I'm I telling you, that support system will show up for you. Yeah, like that honesty aspect of it. Like, and, and Jess asked this in the comments of, you know, what, what do you do if they get upset? And it's like, if they really, if you're honest, people can't get upset with you for being honest. You know, we want... We want honesty and we want to give honesty in return. They might, they might they can. <laughs> they are able to and can. But I think that we have to remember that you have to put yourself first because your mental health really should be your top priority. Everybody should be putting their mental health first. So if you're not putting your mental health first, nobody else is going to. And I think that's really a big piece too. Even though it's hard to say no, we're afraid that we might hurt somebody or let them down. But if you say yes, you're letting yourself down and you're hurting yourself instead. And that's just kind of narcissistic. Like, why would you do that? It's easier to have that open and honest, not that it's easy, but it's easier to have that open and honest communication and say, I just, can't, I don't think I can handle it right now because I've already got so much on my plate. And I don't want to do it, you know, half as well as I could have. Right. And that's what, I mean, we see this a lot. And, and Lisa, I know you surround yourself with some super just boss babes out there just killing it. And sometimes, like, we see it and we're like, oh, that person is just throwing out content. And that person is just pulling out more. And they look like, did they ever sleep? And we see that, and I think a lot of it is that trigger side of like social media. Like you wake up at three in the morning and you can't like and you see something that somebody else has put out and they've done it day after day after day, and you're like, I need to level up. I need to be on that. I need to be doing more. And that's one of the things that I need to write down. Like I need to write down my journal. Yeah. You write that down, and that. 
I could go on social media, talk about it for a long time. I work in social media. I'm on social media. There's a lot of positives. There's also um, a lot of things that can be harmful for people. And again, I, I could, I don't want to like overkill our time here, but um, one, my one thing for social is to clean up your feed and make sure everything you're looking at are people you're following are making you feel good about yourself. And if they're not, even if that's me, I don't care, like unfollow. And that's just one thing I'll say about that because your social media can be very powerful. It can be very educational, but it can also be really harmful. So that's a good one. And I, you know, I think these are my like main four pillars to help with anxiety or just help accepting yourself or help navigating through life just a little bit easier. There's so much more to all of this. Um, you know, I, I, like I said, I've dedicated really the last decade of my life to learning and writing things down and reading and sharing. And I'm finally sharing and it feels really good. So it's funny to me every time I do something like this or talk to somebody else about this, it's like, we can all relate so much. And that just goes back to the point where it's like, this isn't like a whack thing to have anxiety or to have second thoughts or insecurities. Like it's, it's kind of what we're all dealing with. And if we just lean on each other and open up and tell our stories and share and, and, you know, express yourself. And I'm going to hit on that all the time, express yourself, express yourself, whatever that looks like, it can be freeing. Yeah. And it's like, you know, I'm just glad I got able, I was able to connect with you all today. And I feel like we're already over time. So I'm, we're not, to I'm, not, done yet. I'm not done yet. Oh, so, I want to talk about, because this is something that being a partner with you through this as like part of your support system and watching this grow, I've learned so much. And so the more I learn about it, I feel like the more aware I am of it. And so I'm more open to seeing other people going through it. Like, do you notice that with your group of, you know, people that are reaching out to you and people that you're connecting with and people that you're helping and supporting? The more we're watching somebody else expose their story, the more we're aware to others. Oh, yeah. Um, I, I have these little uh, monthly, like, Zoom meetups. I just started them. I had my second one and it, we've, it's actually grown a little bit so far. It's been really great. And it's just really, really the first, the first zoom, I was like giving tips and like answering questions. And then the second one, like the returning girls who have just like all become friends now, which is really amazing. They started giving each other tips. Like they're like, Oh, did you try that smoothie? Like, yo, like, did you read that? But what about that yoga mat? Did you get that? You know, like, that self-aware, that awareness piece, when we all start talking about it, like Danielle, you know, you've seen me go through this and um, it, it's, it's, it really brings people together. I, you know, is really what I'm going to say. And you learn from each other and it, it, like you said at the beginning of this conversation, it really normalizes this, normalizes this conversation. So I don't know if that answered your question. Yeah, one more thing, last thing, and this is big in education. It's big in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of industries, and it's about to be very prevalent. Talk to us really quickly about emotional dumping. Because when I um, was going through this with you and you were where you were very focused on placing boundaries and we were all learning with like, I don't remember what it <laughs> Jack. <laughs> there was a article um that you had sent me or we had talked about and it was about have you ever asked someone in your support system is it okay if i just emotionally dump on you right now because we have a lot i mean we're all feeling some type of way right now about whether we go back to school whether we don't go back to school the the decisions that are being made are we in control or are we not in control and it's just like we're so i think this goes back to boundaries as well. Um, I remember talking about this and going through this. Emotional dumping is a thing, but sometimes it's too much for the other person. But if you're in this emotional state, you're not going to recognize that. Right. So I'm going to challenge that and say, 
you know, you would just need to respect that person's boundaries, but they also need to express those boundaries to you. So, I, you know, I think it comes back to that. And I think because when we're in these places where we need support and we're just like calling people crying or like sending them text messages as long as a novel or whatever the case may be, if that person doesn't respond or get back to us, we should, instead of taking it personally, we need to be like, wow, that was probably a lot for them right now. Hopefully that person can communicate that with you, but I really think this conversation comes back to boundaries. And I think that if you do need to emotionally dump like that, like if it's really built up, I would highly recommend finding a professional to lean into. If you can, I know sometimes they are expensive or there's not necessarily a resource available at that time, but that's what therapy is for. Like you don't have to worry about overwhelming that therapist. Like you're paying them to listen to your ass, right? Sorry. So like, you know, I would recommend therapy if it gets to that point. But also, if you have a support system that's super strong that you've built up and that you've communicated with, I think boundaries are going to play a big role there. And there's nothing wrong with looking at the person you share a wall with or a cubicle with or a hallway with and being like, listen, I get it. I just can't take that on right There's now. nothing wrong with that. No, <laughs> and that's about like – Set it for yourself to be like, I can't take this on right now. Like I'm dealing with my own stuff. Like I love you and know that I support you and want what's best for you. But like, I have to look out for myself and you know, it's just the communication game really. Yeah. So I don't know if that was the answer. But yeah. awesome. All right, guys, hit us in Q and A. We've got a few minutes. We've already taken a like a little six minute extra, but it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. Oh, I'm like. Bring the team back in here. Do we have any last minute questions? Oh my gosh, I feel like I got so many tips tonight, and I talk to you like every day. But even just like diving in, having a conversation, and talking about mindset, and every time you have a conversation with somebody about it, it comes out, and you learn more. Learn about yourself, you learn about them. Communication is so huge and um, it's such a simple thing, but it really makes the difference um, in everything and work in your family as a parent. You know, it's my dog. And knowing you're not the only one. Yeah. Like there should not be this stigma placed on anxiety. I, 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 I'm not a therapist, clearly, but anybody who says that they have never experienced anxiety has got to be not knowing what anxiety else. is. <laughs> Perhaps. I mean, I feel that I feel that way about my students. A lot of my students don't realize that they have anxiety and they tell me the things that they're feeling. And I'm like, sweetheart, you're anxious. Like I couldn't be that. It's like, okay, it's okay. Like we all right. get a little anxious sometimes, but right. there is a lot, there is a lot of stigma. I think, yeah, the stigma, that's a huge part of my platform. Like I want to end the stigma. Like I'm so sick of, you know, I could talk about medication too. I personally take medication for my anxiety and there's so much stigma around the medication for anxiety. And people are like, you, you take an antidepressant? What's wrong with you? Like, why, why, if, if, if a diabetic needs insulin, I need serotonin, man, like give it to me. So, <laughs> you know, there is a stigma, like just think of yeah. it like that. <laughs> and give me all the dopamine. <laughs> what? I said, give me all the dopamine. Yeah, like hit me up with the good hormones. Like my yeah. brain is blocking them off. But um, yeah, there is a stigma and I think if we all open up this conversation and we all communicate more, we all express ourselves more, like we'll all be part of changing that. And that's really powerful. You know? Yeah. So we are um, giving away a really, really, really dope journal from Google. So we really hope that you guys um, go in there, fill out our feedback form. We want to encourage you guys to write down anything that you're feeling and learn that skill, tailor it, do whatever it is that you do. Start a journaling club. Um, <laughs> talk to your, your students about um, support that you're about to give them. We're all going to embark on this in the next few weeks, and it's going to be a little crazy for everyone. So, Lisa, I know the group is going to thank you as well. I love you. Thank you for doing this for us. This was amazing. Thank you for having me. 
there's so much more on my blog too. Um, if you just want to search on there, there's a lot of stuff. Um, my Instagram, whatever. Feel free. Um, I'm honored to uh, be part of the Wellness Week. I think what you guys is doing is phenomenal, and um, I'm always here for any of you. You can, just, if you don't have my number from Danielle, you can shoot me a DM on Instagram. I'll answer it. Uh, I'm just. What? I said I did that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you me on Instagram when you started talking about boxing, and I, I sent you a video. Just so oh, know. yes. Ooh, let's box. Anyways, thank you so much for having me. <laughs> I hope um, we all took something from this, whether we just feel lighter. Thanks, or, you know. Thank you so much, Lisa. Thank you so much, thank you Thanks, so much Lisa. Yay! Oh. All right. Tomorrow is our last thank day you. of my friends, um, Anna Ross from Anna Bakes. So while you're on Instagram checking out Lisa at Adventures and Anxiety, go check out at Anna Bakes FL. Lisa, that one is for you. She makes really oh. cool cupcakes, yeah. delicatessen, um, you name it. She puts a bow on it, makes it beautiful for you, and it tastes phenomenal. So she still bitter. I didn't get that Oreo box. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> She is recording a video for us. We're going to be pushing it all out to you guys because tomorrow we want you to relax, go back over these videos, do the flow, do some journaling. We've really prompted you guys into believing that you are worth it because we know you're worth it. And we are here for you for whatever you need. Um, Pedro, Dana, Heather, Sarah, and Lisa, and Anna tomorrow, we're all here for you, whatever you guys need. We are so proud. Concluding this week of wellness. Look forward to the recording tomorrow. Bye. 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 Thank you.